the only unknown is finding her. You know, the, the players are there and someone knows something. A young North Carolina girl vanishes, and now police are naming her mother as a suspect. But with no charges and no arrest, her mother has allegedly left the country. She kind of has free reign with a heads up to get to where she wants to go to get out of the country, and that's exactly what happened. We hear from a retired NYPD detective about what may be going through investigators' minds. Where's the next step? What's the next hurdle? You know, if you're if you're going to the point of announcing she's a suspect, what else are you waiting for? Plus, what's ahead in the case? If you have even the slightest ability to charge her, you do it. Because think about it, nothing's going to move forward if you don't charge her. Nothing. And most importantly, could Madalena Kojakari still be alive? One person mentioned she could be somewhere. So you have to keep that as a viable lead until it's not. Lawn Crime has been following this story since it broke in 2022, when 11-year-old Madalena Kojakari disappeared. She was last seen on November 21st, 2022, getting off the school bus in Cornelius, North Carolina. That's about 25 minutes north of Charlotte. The FBI released school bus surveillance video of this, showing Madalena stand in line waiting to get off the bus. She plays with her hair a bit before walking off the bus and exiting the frame. She hasn't been seen since. Here's retired NYPD detective Tom Smith. Well, you know, first of all, whenever there's a child involved, it's devastating and it's heartbreaking to hear, you know, when, when a child disappears and, and what may lay ahead, you know, with her disappearance. When the parents are involved in the investigation, it makes it worse. It makes it more heartbreaking. And the one thing that always triggers me when, when it comes to children that are missing is where's everybody else? Like schools, friends, friends' parents, uh, where are all of them to go, hey, I haven't seen her in a while, is she okay? Friends knocking on a door, you know, like anything like that, especially school. Like, I don't, I don't get the, the distance or length of time it takes to, to get an investigation going when it involves a child, uh, especially of school age that's going to school. Smith is referring to the lapse in time between the day Madalena was last seen and when she was reported missing. That school bus video, her last known sighting, was November 21st. But she wasn't reported missing until December 15th, when her mother, Diana Kojikari, was called into a meeting with her daughter's school. That's when Diana said her daughter had been missing since November 23rd. It was several weeks until she was reported missing. It was December 15th because her school had a parent or had a conference rather with her parents. Finally, it came out. We haven't seen her. So those about three weeks. Is that super valuable in the search for a missing person? Oh, 24, 48 hours is important, you know, much less three weeks. You know, you could get around the world twice in three weeks, uh, you know, and if it's something sinister, if it's something bad, evidence is gone witnesses are gone, you know, uh, people recalling when they may have seen her or seen something suspicious is out of your head. Now you're relying on people to kind of get into their memory to remember something, which is, which can happen, obviously, you know, that can occur, but it's so much better on an investigative level if it's quick and right away. I want to thank Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's Law & Crime YouTube Takeover. If you've seen our videos, you know Morgan & Morgan is a proud sponsor of Law & Crime, and our content proves the world isn't always safe. So if you're hurt and don't know where to turn, look no further than Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. With Morgan & Morgan, there's a $0 upfront fee. You only pay them if you win. If you've ever been injured, you can start your Morgan & Morgan claim in eight clicks or less at forthepeople.com slash YouTube Takeover. Diana Kojikari and her then-husband, Christopher Palmeter, were later arrested for failure to report Madalena missing. But through police interviews, both Palmeter and Diana told different stories about what happened to Madalena. What's interesting in this case is that the mother and the stepfather kind of pointed fingers at each other, and they came up with varying different, I guess, 
assumptions of what could have happened to Madalena. So one person is saying, okay, yeah, the mom took her, she's hidden overseas with her relatives. And then the mom is saying, hey, the stepdad actually sold her for money. So how do we determine who to believe? Well, you get them, you know, again, if they were both here, you'd get them at the same time in separate rooms and you interview them both at the same time. And, you know, then you get who's going to who's going to crack, who's going to make the deal, you know, and there's always a deal there. And, and that's as a you know detective is what you kind of rely on when you're dealing with two people telling two different stories about one event. You know, who can you get to flip on the other one? Uh, and that would have been the time to do it. You know, I wouldn't have named anyone a suspect. They would have been both in the precinct at the same time in two different rooms. And then, you know, one tactic is put them in the same room and see what their reactions are and see what happens. Uh, you know, those are all investigative tactics that go on. Uh, but then again, you have the ability to to add other agencies or other departments to help you out in the investigation. According to investigators, Diana and her mother discussed the idea that Paul Meter gave Madalena away for money during a jailhouse phone call. In a separate jailhouse call, Paul Meter told his brother Diana, quote, had a lot of cash with her and he did not know where it came from. Investigators seized more than 20 items when they investigated the couple's home. Diana eventually pleaded guilty to the charge of failure to report and was sentenced to 6 to 17 months in prison. Paul Meter pleaded not guilty. It was a trial that was covered by local North Carolina stations. Your full person has reported to the court you found the defendant, Christopher James Palmenter, in 22 CR 366-223, guilty of fair to report disappearance of a child to law enforcement. Was this your verdict, so say all of you? Yes. Paul Meter was ultimately sentenced to 30 months of probation. His verdict came down just months ago in late May. The next month, Madalena's mother, Diana, was publicly named as a suspect. Why would it have taken so long for her to be listed as a suspect? Yeah, that's, you know what, that, that got me too. Uh, we were just thinking about things that jump out of the, of the page on you, and, and that's certainly one of them. What transpired during that time that she wasn't a suspect or the husband wasn't a suspect? You know, and, and we can't answer that because they're not going to tell you. Uh, and that's the, the frustrating part when you start looking into a case or delving into a case to want to get answers of where they are in investigations. And listen, I get it. You know, I've been involved in investigations that had to be kept, not so much secret, but you don't want to let certain investigative techniques or information out just in case there is something else that's, that's going on with the case. I get that. But you just wonder what led to that. And you know what? Naming someone as a suspect is good, but why isn't she, where's the next step? What's the next hurdle? You know, if you're, if you're going to the point of announcing she's a suspect, what else are you waiting for to either charge her or convene a grand jury or something like that? What, what are you waiting for or what else are you hoping comes up that you're avoiding or, or not getting to that level yet? What happened next is that Diana apparently left the country. On her Facebook account, Diana posted a picture of herself seemingly on an airplane. The caption read, quote, on the way from New York JFK to Frankfurt, then to Bucharest after nine years of absence from the country. Bucharest is the largest city in Romania. That's driving distance from Diana's native country of Moldova. The next thing that happens after they announce the mother is the suspect, all of a sudden, we can't find her. She apparently is overseas. She went international and investigators are saying they don't have her passport. They didn't collect it. So it is possible that she fled the country. I mean, would it even be considered fleeing the country right now? She doesn't have any charges against her. No, not, not at all. And that's what I, that's what I said about, you know, naming a suspect, you know, you're not constricting her. You can't collect anything from her. You can't take anything from her. All you're doing is what I said. You're giving her a heads up about where the investigation's going. And if she has the means or any suspect at that point has the means to flee, to flee, that's what's going to happen. And that's what happened in this case. You know, you're not taking her passport. You're not putting a, a, you know, a flag or anything on her or be on the lookout for her, which we call a bolo. You know, none of that is happening. So, she kind of has free reign with a heads up to get to where she wants to go to get out of the country. And that's exactly what happened. 
So now this case has gone international. We can't confirm 100% that she's over in Europe, but it seems pretty likely at this point. So what would it take for North Carolina or American authorities to go overseas, bring her home? Well, she'd have to be charged, first of all. So, you know, now would be a perfect time to, if they have enough evidence to take, like I said before, the next step in, in actually charging her, now would be the best time to convene a grand jury, get her indicted if they have the evidence to do that. And if they do indict her now, now it's her. Now they have the means to put out, you know, a, a uh, alert on her passport to get uh, Interpol involved, to get HSI involved, to see if they could track her passport to see where she actually went. You know, all of those can take place. And then if she is stopped somewhere, the ability to possibly extradite her, but it depends where she is. So if it's possible for Diana to leave the country and she has roots in Eastern Europe, why list her as a suspect without charging her? Just based on what you're telling me right now, it doesn't seem like there's a huge incentive for officials to list someone publicly as a suspect because things like this could happen. They could leave the country. There's no warrant out against them for their arrest. So why would law enforcement have listed her publicly as the suspect? Well, again, not getting into their head or their, you know, uh, tactics, but sometimes when you do name someone a suspect, and you'll surveil them to see what they do next. You know, so the surveillance of that person will kind of take place before you name them to see what they do. You know, so if, if you're surveilling them and they all of a sudden take off towards an airport, that in my mind as a detective would be enough to stop them, to bring them into a precinct, to question them more about where you're going and what's going on. Uh, you know, but just to, just to blanketly say she's a suspect, this is what happens. And, you know, sometimes it's a roll of the dice. You know, there's, there's people that you name as suspects that will break down and feel the pressure of being a suspect now and give up information, you know, because they don't want to be on the run, you know, and the pressure and stress of being named a suspect gets to them. That is certainly a tactic. But in this case, you know, it worked the opposite where she had a heads up and uh, was able to take off. And while investigators are keeping an eye on Diana, the public has some criticism for law enforcement based on the timeline of Madalena's case. We talked about blame a bit there with the mom and stepdad kind of pointing fingers at each other, but I'm wondering if there's any blame to be put, so to speak, on law enforcement. Just based on the timeline alone, I mean, blame might be kind of a strong word, but it's been quite a while since this girl was missing and we don't even have charges for her abduction. What do you think? Yeah, you know, there's there's a responsibility uh, to law enforcement without a doubt, and but you don't know again when you're when you're holding it close to you know an internal in, you know investigation sort of and not giving it out to the public, you know you're not sure where they're at or why certain things took too long. Uh, you know, those are questions you would love to have. See, I always had in my mind kind of a time frame. It gets to a certain point where the game's up. Now you start involving the public. Now you go public with what you got, who you got, the evidence that you have, and that's what spurs people to come forward with more information. And I think at this point is the time. She's not here. If she's your main subject, you're going to have to get more information or more people on board to possibly charge her. So why not let the cat out of the bag at this point and lay out to the public what you got and ask the public's help? Smith says it's possible and even likely that law enforcement know more than they're letting on. Is it possible that North Carolina investigators are already working with prosecutors, getting charges filed, and then potentially talking to the international authorities? Absolutely. You know, again, if they're, if they're being quiet about it, a grand jury could get convened, you know, through the, the DA's office. That could all be taking place and then they'll just pop up and say, hey, we charged her. She's now officially charged with a murder or disappearance, however they categorize it, you know, depending on the evidence that they have. Now, could they be waiting for certain things to come back? Maybe they found the crime scene that they're not letting out. Maybe there's a DNA test that's being conducted right now that they're waiting on the results. We don't we just don't know. Uh, and that's where you know, everyone's, you know, uh, responsibility is to bring the charges forward on her. 
In your professional experience, what do you think is next in the investigation? What steps should investigators take if they want to bring charges? Well, gather the evidence, present it to a DA, see what you have. If you have even the slightest ability to charge her, you do it. Because think about it, nothing's going to move forward if you don't charge her. Nothing. You know, the, there's no power of law enforcement with this case unless she's charged. So if, if the evidence is there and you have the ability to do it, now is certainly the time to do it. But there's more to the case than just Diana Kojikari. We've talked a lot about the suspect we have listed now, the mother, but I mean, we have to go back to the overarching theme here that this young girl, Madalena Kojikari, is missing. And it's been years since she was last seen. Is it possible that she's still alive and out there? Sure, you know, because here's, here's why. One person mentioned she could be somewhere. So you have to keep that as a viable lead until it's not, you know. So if that wasn't the case, then this might be tricky in, in really getting to the, the end of this. But as long as someone even mentioned a, a viable lead of her being in another country, that lead does have to get ran down until it's proven that that is totally false, that didn't happen. But that has to be uh, still a lead. These cases are just are they're hard, but they're not, you know, and I don't know if that makes any sense. But, you know, you you know, what has to be done. You know who you're looking for. You have the two people that are probably involved in this, you know, so so the unknown is the only unknown is finding her. You know, the, the players are there and someone knows something. And I've said that in every case that I've ever done that becomes kind of a mystery. Someone knows something and it's knocking on doors and showing her picture and getting out there and getting, uh, you know, two people who may know something. And that's how things, you know, the, the slightest little piece of information can help. And I would, like I said to, before, you plead to the, the public for that small piece of information that they may lead to the end of this. If you have information about Madalena Kojikari's whereabouts, contact the Cornelius Police Department or the FBI. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.